Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a blind AB microphone test between the Cascade V57 and the fans' favourite, the Rode NT1A. So the reason for testing both of these microphones is because for a long time now I've been seriously wanting to get hold of an NT1A and just a quick shout out here this is my good friend David Hutchman's NT1A which I keep borrowing all the time Uchi seriously I won't ask you it again you can have this back in your editing suite so you can do your VOs and stuff without the harassment of me wanting to borrow your microphone but the thing is I really like the NT1A and when I listen to it in isolation, I think it sounds awesome. People complain about the 1A against the 1O, it's dead bright and all the rest of it. Pfft, whatever, you know, that's just down to personal taste and preference. The truth be known, a lot of these microphones where people go, yeah, well, you know, they're very flat, as in not the NT1A, but the NT1. I mean, not that I've tried the NT1, but quite often when people kind of refer to something as having a flat frequency response, sometimes I just think, that sounds dull. But then again, my ears are knackered over like 30 years of doing music production and stuff, so maybe all the top end's gone in mind, so maybe the NT1A sounds great to me. So with that whole thing about tonality and frequency and response and stuff, it's really important to pick your microphone correctly for your own voice. It's all well and good listening to people like me on YouTube going through stuff, and especially with a being because, you know, you can kind of compare two things. But the problem with this, as it is with every single video, Video on YouTube to do with microphones is you don't know what my voice naturally sounds like as you don't any other persons on YouTube so there's a huge problem there I mean I'm not saying don't watch mic videos you know what I mean because they're all useless because you don't know the person but you know there is a, a lot of truth in not knowing the person's voice who's talking so you don't know what my voice naturally sounds like but this will give you an idea as the differences between the pair of them with my voice. Now, let me just kind of briefly describe my voice if I can. It's not very bassy. Um, I have a fairly annoying kind of like peak around maybe two, two and a half K in my voice. Um, I'm also quite sibilant as well. So them kind of things there about my voice don't lend themselves particularly well to a lot of microphones. And to be honest, even on a flat microphone, if I get, you know, within a certain distance, I will, I will kind of go into sibilance and stuff and all the rest of it. So that is something else that you really have to bear in mind with these things as well when you listen to stuff on the internet is the fact that you don't know that person's voice. So with all that said, and before I start losing the few subscribers that I've got and other YouTubers who might do microphone video test my turn and go, no, what's that mad scouser doing? He's just opened Pandora's box. We'll carry on and get past this bit. So despite everything that I've just said there and the obvious futility of not being able to gauge a sound correctly because you're not familiar with the source material unless you've heard it in the real world I'll just carry on anyway because despite what I've just said you know this is two different microphones so at the very least we will hear or potentially hear differences between them so that is one thing you can do uh, with sources of audio where you're not familiar with the source audio as in me what you can definitely do though is potentially hear the differences between two microphones so maybe this test isn't as futile as what i've just led you to believe so a bit of technical detail about the microphones and the test both of these microphones are usually referred to as large diaphragm studio condensers so basically what that means is both of these microphones have got capsules in which are roughly one inch in diameter they are both cardioids which means that they pick up mostly from the front and they are also true condensers which means that they require 48 volts worth of phantom power as opposed to some condensers which are electric condensers with like pre-polarized capsules and such these 
these are proper, both of them proper condensers. And the way that I am powering and amplifying them is I'm using a Behringer UMC 202 HD. Now what I've recently found about that particular USB audio interface is that it can be used standalone as a two channel microphone preamplifier with phantom power capabilities, which is exactly what I'm doing with it right now. So what it is, I've got it powered by a battery as well, just so I can try and eliminate as much kind of earth issues and such and all the rest of it. And the microphones themselves as well are kind of like positioned kind of roughly thereabouts, you know, similar. I mean, I didn't get a ruler out or not or a laser to try and work it all out. But basically, you know, they're in the same plane, same angle, same height, all that stuff. Or more importantly, the capsules are from your position, they may look a little odd, but what it is, they are roughly the same position for the capsules and they are thereabouts the same distance from my voice. And both of the microphones have got mesh shields on them. And I personally find that these kind of like don't interfere as much as say a foam filter would do, or even like a dual layer nylon popper stopper and whatnot. So basically these are only here to try and not impede the EQ and tone as much as what other filters might do. And also to help reduce plosives because I'm quite close Close to the microphones. Now there will have been plosives through this. I'm not going to try and reduce them or get rid of them or anything like that in post. And here's the reason why is because I have got both of these microphones in their most optimal game positions going into the camera. And then in post, all I'm going to do is apply the slightest of limiting on both of them. And that's only so I can bring them up as close to zero as possible and basically get a level between them where they're roughly there about the same volume on the output. Now, I don't apply any EQ and the very slight limiting that I make to them doesn't actually have an effect on tone either because one thing as well that you have to bear in mind as soon as you even go to dynamics process and it will impact the actual tonal characteristics of the audio that you apply dynamics to okay so with all that boring stuff out the way then what I'm going to do now I'm just going to step out the frame and let's go for some silence on these microphones Actually, before I get into the silence noise test, what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit. I won't go on for too long because I've already been doing that during this test. But what I'm going to do here is just talk a little bit. And that's so that we can get an idea of what the microphones are like for very close miking. Now, this might be the kind of thing that you may want to do for podcasting or even voiceover stuff like, you know, stuff off camera. So this will give us a really good idea as to how both of these microphones sound like this. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, I have now been able to drop the gain considerably lower because I'm a lot closer. So what I'm going to do now, when I go to the silence test, what's going to happen, the first one is going to be in the high position, and that was from the daytime, although I've recorded it now, and that's only because it's quieter outside, so it gives us a fairer representation with a lack of like, you know, extraneous noises going on. And then I'll just run this setting as well as part of the silence test, so we can get an idea of what the microphones are like when they're not being over gained. Okay, so to the silence test. Okay, so I'm going to reveal which microphone was which, although you may have got this during the silence section because one of them is definitely a bit quieter than the other. And the quieter microphone and the one that's been microphone A during the test has been the Rode. And microphone B has been the Cascade V57. Now, I know there's going to be a bunch of people out there who are thinking to themselves, hold on a minute, Dave, you're doing microphone testing in your living room. Surely that's not the best environment for doing such tests. Well, you would be absolutely correct. But what it is, I do these examples and tests of like microphones and cameras and such indoors and outdoors in environments where like the vast majority of people will be likely to be recording and they are not going to be professional 
stressful environments. So hopefully what I'm doing here is giving people like an idea of stuff of how these types of things respond in the typical environment that most people actually use them. Because I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that the vast majority of people on YouTube who are doing, say, like music production or camera stuff or any audio and video stuff are probably doing it at home, maybe in a bedroom or like me in a living room. So what I do with these tests and examples is to show how these things respond typically in environments where most people are likely to be using them. All right, so before I get to the end of the video, what I would like to do is just clear up a mistake that I've made in the past with regard to v57 what it is my assumption was that the cascade v57 was no longer made or manufactured or sold that is absolutely incorrect i've since found that it does still get made and it still goes out as part of a three mic set now i don't know about the rest of the world but in the uk a company called studio care is actually the distributor for this microphone so there's going to be links in the description where you can go and check out this microphone at studio care and the package that it comes in with two pencil microphones for 210 pound it's ridiculous and also there'll be links down there as well for the rode nt1a so if you've liked this video then get all over that like button like there's no tomorrow subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon notification do not thing and also share the video amongst all your friends i'm fairly sure they would really appreciate it so last thing is i've been david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now